This is Geometry B, Unit 7, Lesson 2. We're talking about chords and arcs. And we're going to deal with a couple of properties about these things. So we need to define some things. So let's draw a circle. We're dealing in this chapter with circles, line segments and lines, etc. in a circle, in and around a circle. Okay. There we go. Okay, so a circle is defined or named by its center. So this is, we'll call this point A. So this is circle A. Okay, we already defined a couple of things in the last video. We defined a line that crosses twice as a secant. And a line that just touches the circle once to be a tangent line tangent. And we said that this relationship exists, that if we draw a radius to the point on the circle that the tangent line touches, the point of tangency we call it, that a right angle is always formed. And that's because the two angles need to be split and if you split a 180 degree angle in half you get 90 degrees. So tangent lines are always perpendicular. And there's a couple of interesting things that come from that. Okay, but today we're talking about arcs and chords. Arcs and chords. So let's define, let's define an arc first. If I take two points, let's say, say B and C. Okay, then the arc BC, BC with a curve above it, an arc, is defined as the portion of the circle between B and C. Now that's called a minor arc. Okay, if I want a major arc, I pick another point on the circle, let's call this D, and I go from B through D to C. And a major arc requires that I use three points. So B, D, C, arc B, D, C is a major arc. So that's the difference between minor arc and major arc. Major arc is the long way around the circle. Minor arc is the short way around the circle. Okay. What's more is we measure, we can measure the arc of B, uh, an, an arc. So the measure of arc B, C is given as the measure of the angle formed with the center of the circle. Okay, in the last chapter we learned that this is called a sector, a sector of a circle when I when I bound a arc with two radii. Okay, but this central angle is the measure of the arc. So the measure of arc AB uh, BC equals the measure of angle BAC. So in other words, let's say that uh, angle BAC looks like about 70 degrees. We would say the measure of arc BC is 70 degrees. And we can put the, the arc measure on the angle in the middle, or I can just put it on the outside. Just put it on the outside. Okay. And by the way, if this is 70 degrees, a full circle is 360, so the measure of arc BDC is 110 degrees. So that together, I'm sorry, what am I doing? 290 degrees. 290 degrees, so that together they make 360 degrees for a full circle. Okay, so that's how we measure an arc. Okay, now there's another, another thing about circles. We talked about arcs, major arcs, minor arcs, and the measure of the arc. We can also talk about something called a cord, a cord. And that is not a piece of rope, though a rope is, can be thought of as something that binds or ties something together, connects two points. A cord, if we call this circle E, circle E, a chord can be thought of as a connecting line segment between any two points on the circle. 
So A and B are F and G. Let's go be consistent. F and G. So this is chord FG. Segment FG is a chord. Okay, and there's a couple of rules that come out of this. Okay, let's say I draw chord FG and I draw another chord that has the same measure. Another chord that has the same measure. Okay, let's, so let's say we draw it so that FG is congruent to uh, HI. So FG is congruent to HI. Then the question becomes, what happens to the measure of the arc? Okay. So arc FG and arc HI. And the answer is, if you have congruent chords, you have congruent arcs. So if FG is congruent to HI, segment FG is congruent to H, segment HI, then, then we can say that arc HI is congruent or has the same measure to arc FG. Okay, not only that, it works backwards. If the arcs are the same, then the chords are the same. So we can actually say if and only if IFF. This flows both directions. It is a biconditional, right? Okay, and so this then we can we can deduce a lot of things. You might be asked a question like this. You might be asked, well, if if the measure of arc H I is uh, let's say 110 degrees, and these two chords are the same, then what is the measure of arc F G? The answer: 110 degrees because they are congruent. Arcs subtended by the same chord or by chord congruent chords are themselves congruent. Okay, there's one more rule about, about uh, these that I want to show you as well. Let me get a new screen up. Okay, and let's draw a circle. Straw dirkle. Oh, a cycle, eh? Hey, hey. All right, said curly. All right, right there. Okay, so a circle. Q. So we got circle Q. Okay, and I've got a chord. I'm going to draw right here. I'm going to draw A and B. A and B. Okay. And I'm going to find the perpendicular bisector of AB perpendicular bisector of AB. Now, for the sake of our, uh, uh, demonstration, I'm going to use my, my construction tools. Okay, so circle A, or chord AB, construct the perpendicular bisector. So we're going to go something like this, from A to B, A to B, and then we're going to draw the perpendicular bisector, and we're going to see what we notice. So here we go, A, B, do, 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 do. Okay, now if we draw it really careful, what do you notice about the point Q? And hopefully you notice that Q is on the perpendicular bisector. Okay, that actually fits, a, is, is that way for a reason. We learned in the last lesson that any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the endpoints. Not only that, the converse is true is true. If a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a line segment, it is on the perpendicular bisector. So there it is. And in fact, this is a circle. And what is a circle? A circle is all points equidistant from the center point. So that by definition of a circle, says QB, is the same as QA. And because Q is equidistant from A and B, it's on the perpendicular bisector. That means then that if I draw a, a triangle connecting the midpoint of the chord, that that will form two congruent right triangles. And these are congruent, okay? 
So here's a problem you might be given in regard to this. You might be given something like this here, and I know this is going a little long, so I'm going to try and be quick. Okay? So here you go. You're given a circle. A cycle. Okay, so given a circle. There, let's go yellow. Circle. Okay, circle R. Okay, and we're given a chord. Let's do a chord right here. Okay. Call this AB, chord AB. Okay, and we're given the perpendicular bisector of AB. And we happen to know the length from the midpoint of the chord to the center of the circle. We'll call this C. So let's say AB equals 12 inches. And let's say CR equals 7 inches. Question they might ask is, what is the radius of the circle? What is RD? Okay. Well, remember, the radius of the circle is the same no matter where you draw it. So draw the other radiuses to the endpoints of the chord, RA and RB, and all of these are the same. <coughs> Call them X, 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 right? Those are all the same. What's more, this is a right triangle, and AB is 12, so that means this is 6 inches, and this is 6 inches, and this is 7 inches, and the Pythagorean theorem applies. X squared equals 6 squared plus 7 squared x squared equals 36 plus 49. x squared equals 85. x is the square root of 85, technically negative or positive, but because we're dealing with positive lengths, the, the positive length is the one that makes sense. Square root of 85 is going to be like 9.1, but let me make sure here. Desmos, square root. 85, 9, oh, 9.2, I was off by 10, 9.2, okay, and inches, all right, so that's the sort of problem you'll be doing, okay, all right, so hopefully that helps, I've gone a little long, I'm going to stop this video.